I've been all over this great country, small towns and big cities, visiting factories and workshops, searching for the soul of America. And you know what? I found it everywhere. So sit back and relax, because we've got it made in America. Once upon a time, a Scotsman named Macintosh invented a coat that could keep out the rain. The Mac, as Brits began calling it, was rubberized. So in summertime, you may have been safe from the rain, but you ended up soaked in sweat. Well, the science of weatherproofing has come a long way, and that science has given us some new words for fabrics, like microporous and Gore-Tex. Just off I-95, about 60 miles northeast of Baltimore, is the charming town of Elkton, Maryland where a short tributary of Chesapeake Bay called the Elk River begins. There's plenty of sunshine here, but also plenty of precipitation. And that suits the people at W.L. Gore & Associates just fine. After all, their business is keeping out the elements. Now, you may not recognize the company name, but you almost certainly know its most popular product, Gore-Tex brand fabric. This breathable waterproof membrane that lines clothing helps to keep wearers warm and dry on the coldest, wettest days. But not all the company's thousand or so products are weather related, like guitar strings, dental floss, and medical devices, which are made in factories around the world. What Gore makes here are fabrics for the U.S. military. Gore's CEO is Terry Kelly. Oh, Terry, you make a lot of stuff here, don't you? We do. How did it all start? It started with Bill and Eve Gore in 1958 is when the company was founded. Bill liked to experiment, and that was essentially where the first product came from for Gore. And that was enough reason for him to start his own company. He had enough confidence to, uh, to go forward. After 17 years as a DuPont research chemist, Bill Gore started his own business in the then new field of plastics. With help from his wife, Eve, he set up shop in their Delaware home and concentrated on experimenting with polytetrafluoroethylene. PTFE. First application was in wiring cable. We would sell oh, into oh, okay. the computer industry, telecommunication mm -hmm. applications. And that was pretty much the first 10 years of our history. Sometimes sons eclipsed their prominent fathers. And in 1969, Gore's son Bob discovered that stretching PTFE produces a strong, porous, but waterproof material. He was a tinkerer, too. He was also a tinkerer, and also a very deep thinker and scientist. Bob Gore's Gore-Tex membrane can now be found almost everywhere. Our military products were launched right in, the, in yeah. the mid 80s, right? That's the extended cold weather clothing system. Our military wears outerwear lined with it and our firefighters and police use it as protection from the elements. Meanwhile, adventurers of all stripes rely on it. Both in this world and out. What about tuxedos? Is everything about making a Gore-Tex tuxedo? Probably not. Does mine keep wearing them? <laughs> <I, yeah. laughs> like a great chef, the company doesn't like sharing the recipe for its signature creation. There are a lot of folks that have tried to uh, copy our products. It's a secret, isn't it? It's... You have to kill you, yeah. I've, and, I've uh, been there already. I... <laughs> <laughs> Gore doesn't actually make the boots, jackets, and gloves that bear its name. That's up to the companies that license the Gore-Tex fabric. The membrane itself is manufactured at another facility, then shipped to Elkton, where it's made into military fabric. Kevin Hickey is Gore's sales leader. Is this Gore-Tex here? This is the Gore-Tex membrane, uh, and it's at the heart of all we do in the fabrics business. Uh, so this is uh, expanded polytetrafluoroethylene, uh, and it's the polymer, oh, sure. it's the core technology of, of our company. BT. PTFE. FE, sure. Polytetrafluoroethylene, and it uh, it starts out in a resin form. A Gore-Tex membrane is dotted with perforations that resemble a microscopic honeycomb. It's that honeycomb structure that lets that keeps liquid water from passing through, but lets that moisture vapor coming off your body to pass so out. Deep. So this resin, through our processes, gets expanded or stretched into a lightweight membrane, the Gore-Tex membrane. But a membrane by itself isn't much use to you and me wanting to wear a garment. So right, right. we need to marry it 
with a textile. Textiles sent by suppliers to Elkton are carefully inspected. After all, even the best umbrella is useless when there's a hole in the middle. Do you ever pretend like you're flying over a forest? Of course not. No? <laughs> the exterior fabric and the Gore-Tex membrane are laminated. Then, through a process known only to a select few associates, a water repellent is added. Now it's ready to ship. You've heard of miracle fabrics? The Gore-Tex membrane is waterproof, windproof, breathable, impervious to spills, and more powerful than any washing machine. How can Gore make all these claims? Because they have the test results. This is the lab where we do quality assurance testing on production. We do R&D, research and development testing. Samples pulled from every spool of finished fabric are smeared with oil, gasoline, and all sorts of other stuff you generally try to keep off your clothes. These poor fabrics, apparently there's no laws that apply to how much abuse a piece of clothing can be forced to endure. Vinny dishes it out. Who are that? One pound per square inch of water is trying to be forced through this fabric. And this simulates someone like an elbow or a knee being wet. Oh, OK. We're actually going to see the water? No, we will not see the water. We hopefully, we won't, hopefully see won't see the okay. water. If we've done All our right. job correctly, we will not see the water. Of course, as any scientist will tell you, lab conditions can only approximate the real worlds. That's why Gore tested its fabrics on real people in extreme real world environments. Comfort technologist Chris Weil explains. This is our environmental chamber. It's actually commonly called the comfort chamber, which is a big misnomer. Uh, nobody's ever really comfortable here. There's no sofas in there? No. The temperatures inside the chamber range from 20 below to 120 above, with every variation of wind chill and humidity added in. Everything imaginable for the appropriate discomfort of human guinea pigs. Basically, we always like to hook them up with some objective measurements. So mm -hmm. we use things like these temperature probes, as well as uh, some radio heart rate monitors. The gauges record the amount of perspiration that escapes, as well as the amount of body heat that's kept in. The final lab test is the rain room. Everything from a drizzle to a torrential downpour. Hey, you never know when you're gonna get stuck in a car wash without a car. <laughs>